latest book, your 10th book. Yes. Jeez, you're a lazy woman, aren't you? <laughs> Makes me just feel really old. <laughs> ten, ten book. <laughs> this is your first non-fiction. Yes. And you, it's part memoir, but part tackling really, yeah. you know, important issues. You want to get mm. conversations happening. Yeah. One of the... Um, one of the things that you talk about in your book, and I'm going to get this name wrong, the test, the... The Bechtel test. Bechtel test. Yes. Well, the Can Bechtel you talk test me is through fascinating. that? Yeah. The Bechtel test was originally created in jest by the um, graphic novelist Alison Bechtel, who I had the chance to meet and speak with. Right. She's incredible. Um, but the Bechtel test has kind of taken off as a way of gauging women's involvement in cinema. So if you watch a film and it's got two female characters in it who speak to each other at any point in the film about Mm -hmm. anything other than a man, that could be like a mother and daughter talking about school, could be anything, then the film passes the Bechdel test. So any two female characters can speak to each other about anything in a whole duration of the film, except for a man, man. And and you pass the test. The vast majority of films fail that simple test, that extremely low bar. So that's how you pass the Bechtel test. And amazingly, the vast majority of films fail. And when you look at the top grossing films, the vast majority of them fail. But again, what's really fascinating about it, so we're talking like Lord of the Rings, all of those films fail, all the Star Wars films fail, Indiana Jones, all of them fail. You know, these are films I grew up with and loved. Yeah. Um, all of the Harry Potter adaptations except one fail the Bechtel test. And like I said, the vast majority. But of films that pass the Bechtel test, so looking at, say, 2013, you had Hunger Games and Frozen. They passed with flying colours. They were also huge at the box office. So if you look at the top grossing films, the vast majority fail, but those that pass make a lot more money than those that fail. Right. So what that implies to me is that this is an ingrained storytelling habit to have very male-centred stories. It's not actually shrewd business acumen. So it's not necessarily giving the public what they want. It's just doing what we've done before. Yes. And there's a couple of reasons for that um, that I've determined anyway, and other people will have their views on this. But one of the really big reasons is the tendency to do remakes. Mm-hmm. So we're remaking Spider-Man again. We're remaking yeah. Batman. And you know, we're re- remaking things that have worked in the past. And those stories are based on comics from like the 1930s and 1940s, right? right. Or we go all the way back to fairy tales, Snow White, you mm. know. Damsel um, in distress. Damsel in distress yeah. stuff. That literally comes from the Middle Ages. Yeah. So these stories obviously reflect the social ideas of the time that the stories were written. Right. In the Middle Ages, you couldn't be a woman with knowledge or power. Yeah. That was viewed really suspiciously. And they used to burn witches and drown them, right? Mm. A very bad time to be a woman. It's also where a lot of our fairy tales come from. All these classic fairy tales come from that period, which is why you see the witch character being so pronounced, because a woman with power had to be an evil character. It was unnatural, so therefore it was supernatural. And you also have the crone character coming from that period. And you see her now as the, you know, the evil stepmother character, Cinderella kind of stuff. You see her as the Cruella de Vil you know, in 101 Dalmatians, yeah. you, you see this continuing portrayal as of older women, particularly as being mad, bad, or irrelevant. Right. So you right. could be a grandmother figure, fine, but you'd be in the background. Yeah. Because if you're going to actually influence the plot as a female character, you had to either be the damsel in distress that the hero could save, because right. it was still very much about the male hero's journey, yeah. or you'd have to be a menace. Mm. Right, because you couldn't just be the good queen. It wasn't considered to be an acceptable thing in the Middle Ages. Again, we're talking so many centuries ago. Yeah. But we keep retelling these stories, and totally. the stories fundamentally have this basis. So you can't, you know, stray too far from that. Mm. When you're telling of the Snow White story, now you might yeah. be able to give her a sword, but she's still going to be the the babe in the woods, right? Yeah. Pitted yeah. against an older, vain woman. Yeah. It's not a great you know, uh, set of characters for us. No. So there's that, that's tendency to remake stories. Again, you know, Lone Ranger from like 1919 and, you know, these stories, Zorro, again, from that same period. Lone Ranger is actually 1915 from a radio play and um, Zorro from 1919 from a graphic novel, right? So we keep retelling these stories that came before the kind of social progress 
that right. saw women even being able to work outside the house. Yeah, yeah. And then the other issue that really I feel um, contributes to this is the nature of the storytellers. So, as a novelist, I'd love to believe that novels were our, for, you know, our most dominant form of storytelling, right? Mm. I'd love to believe that. Yeah, yeah, That would be yeah. false. Yeah. You know, these days it's very much um, modern cinema, big budget cinema, yeah. Oscar winning films or films that have a huge budget, marketing budget that we see, you know, exploding across, you know, the billboards and in the box office. Yeah. That's our dominant storytelling. And again, there's a lot of remakes, but also if you look at the top grossing films of 2012, for instance, 91% um, of the directors were men, 98% mm. of the cinematographers, 85% of the writers were men, and 83% of the executive producers, so the people who are financing it. So it's a very oh, specific man. group of people. Um, and it's natural that they would be telling stories that interest them, yeah. of course. You know? yeah. There's no finger pointing needed here, but we can simply see that other people aren't getting a chance to kind of get in and get that kind of big budget backing. Yeah. And likewise, the people who decide who gets a nod at the Oscars, um, it's the Academy Award voters. Yeah. And 94% of them are white and 75% are male. Mm. So again, mm. you know, you're not getting a lot of diversity, no. racial diversity, gender diversity, cultural diversity in what are now, you know, our really dominant stories. Because I'm now going to watch all movies and <laughs> watch the conversations between women. Yeah. You know, because you're right. I think of just every mm. movie, and you're so right, it's all based yeah. around a love interest. Of course. And, 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 and that's natural because the writer is most likely a white heterosexual man, yeah. you know, not taking anything away from their individual stories, because I love a lot of these films. Yeah. But if it's always being told by this same demographic, you know, where the storytellers matter because it's it's who's determining what story is told and from what perspective. Yeah. So the women then are love interests or they compete for each other for the male hero. Yes. You know, it's why they don't speak to each other except about that male protagonist. And you think of those ridiculous old, you know, sayings like all women hate each other. I mean, yeah. where would we get that idea? In film, they don't even speak to one another, yeah, you know? Yeah, and it's yeah. totally different from real life where you have these incredible relationships between women, these long-standing yes. friendships with support networks. And when a film is made where that is reflected, it's a chick flick. Yeah. It's yeah. not for the general population. It's kind of, it's a way of sort of segregating women's stories as being only of interest to women. Yeah. And then looking at male stories and saying that they're everyone's business. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously there are exceptions here, but when you look at the dominant rule, it's still very problematic. 